Hello. I'm continuing to talk about the Rocky movies. And we are uh, <clears throat> at uh, Rocky IV. And the last one in this set. But there's still a couple more here. But uh, yeah. And in this set, there's also the director's cut. Um, <clears throat> for the most part... Uh, Uh, you know, really, the, the overall story is the same in either cut. Um, though, in the director's cut, you see more of uh, Rocky Three, the ending of Rocky Three, uh, more than in the theatrical cut. There also was a uh, missing of uh, the two gloves coming to punch and each other and blow up of the... Of, uh, the the one glove with the American flag and the other with the uh, Russian or Soviet Union flag. Their glove, because, you know, in this movie, it's uh, uh, we uh, are introduced to Ivan Drago, played by uh, uh, Dolph Lundgren, who is uh, <clears throat> one of the most uh, famous characters in the entire Rocky franchise, one of the most... Uh, uh, notable antagonists, um, and, um, of course this movie stars, uh, Sylvester Stallone, who also <clears throat> wrote and directed this, and, uh, Talia Shire and Burt Young, Carl Weathers is in it again, and then also, of course, uh, Dolph Lundgren. Um, Bridget Nielsen is in this, who, at the time they made the film, um, she was dating Sylvester Stallone, and later on, um, she, uh, you know, the two of them got married, but then they divorced a few years later. Um, in the theatrical cut, uh, she's in the film more. You know, she plays Ivan Drago's wife. You know, Ivan Drago doesn't talk too much, uh, throughout the film. Uh, and so in a way... Uh, sort of like the guy who's, I guess his coach or manager or whatever. He is somebody who is with him at like press conferences to talk with him. You know, he, uh, Ivan Drago doesn't speak much. So, you know, the theatrical cut, it's usually like the manager guy and the, uh, and his wife talking for uh, Ivan. He says very little. And then, uh, but in the director's cut, I mean, he still talks very little, but, uh, the wife, uh, his wife isn't in it as much. And I've seen some say that's very petty of Stallone, because he just got rid of his wife, or at least how sort of, uh, important she was. Like, the importance of her character isn't as strong of the, the director's cut. Um, but, you know, other characters get less screen time too um we see uh in this film that uh you know you know Ivan Drago wants to fight Rocky um just wants to you know uh, just see you know, that because, you know, he's able to have a mean and powerful punch. As the manager says, like, you know, whatever he hits, he destroys. You know, we see various moments and some of the little training stuff that we see where he's hitting or, or punching like something. And you could also tell how fast and hard he punches and... Yeah, he isn't somebody to miss with, uh, miss with, and um, but Apollo Creed wants to fight him first, and then Rocky can fight him later. So uh, early on, you know, and um, you know, and you now he wants Rocky's help. Uh, Adrian's not too fond of this idea. Like, you know, Paul really has nothing to prove. You know. 
you should just be happy with like the overall you know legacy he has and just be done and uh happy whereas uh you know rocky is sort of the same but you know he's gonna be willing to help with uh help apollo out if he needs it and also in in the director's cut you see more of adrian uh, primarily in the beginning of the movie, you know, Adrian definitely has a new, or a more prominent presence in the director's cut than the theatrical, um, and the making of it, which is actually shorter, which is a complete shame that they didn't have the entire, like, 90 plus minute documentary, instead they have it, like, condensed to, like, an hour. <clears throat> they can find the whole making of uh, uh, Rocky vs. Drago, director's cut of Rocky IV, um, on YouTube. Um, but in that, you know, you get to see, or hear, and see Stallone talk about some of the changes he's making. And um, rather than just sort of, like, separate the overall, you know, both versions, it's all overall the same. But certain things are going like in the beginning it starts with uh you know uh starts with uh Apollo Creed and Rocky talking as well as uh with the whole you know him you know hearing about Ivan Ivan Drug wanting to fight Rocky as opposed to, you know, the the, the the opening title is exactly, you know, it says here, oh, Rocky for the Rocky versus Drago. Um, instead, and there's certain things that are different in this version, uh, like more Adrian, as I mentioned, and also, uh, you don't get to see Polly until uh, the whole like press conference where Rocky and Ivan are gonna fight in Russia, um, and you also see why they go to Russia in this version. Like what was cut from the uh, theatrical was that the, the the boxing board was not going to allow. Uh, Rocky to fight. Ivan Drago. Um, obviously, because, you know, when Apollo Creed finally fights him, um, what happens is uh, Apollo Creed is killed. And so, which obviously from the beginning, like when the decision that Rocky has to fight Ivan Drago, it's already personal. But even here, just the way it's cut, it's, it's still personal. But also, I like how in this and the director's cut, he doesn't hesitate to, like, throw the towel, like, just as he's getting hit for the final time and falls, he grabs the towel, and then, so it's like, he didn't even have a chance to throw it in to stop the fight, and, like, the whole, that fight was supposed to be, like, an exhibition, it wasn't supposed to be, um, anything big, like, a, an actual major fight, you know, also, the whole uh, living in America scene that you see throughout the, the whole in the theatrical cut, um, it's there in the directors, but it isn't as uh, in the forefront like in the theatrical cut. So that's a different, or that's a difference in the director's cut. Um, And, um, there's, like, 40 extra minutes of, like, alternate angles and scenes, and certain scenes were removed, and then other scenes were put in, or extended scenes, and the extended cut. And I know I'm going all over the place with this, but overall, um, it's interesting to see a brand new sort of version of Rocky IV, and my feeling over uh, of the whole 
like director's cut is it's good um the biggest example of that is completely missing that people have talked about was the robot that Polly gets for his birthday a lot of people hated that or thought it was cheesy you know as time went on yeah some people I, I've heard thought that was completely ridiculous and stupid to even include that at all um but Stallone said he saw it at some party he was at and thought that'd be kind of cool so he wrote that into the film but then later on he didn't like it so he cut it and as a result you don't see Polly until like around halfway through the film where he's at the press conference with Rocky um, which some people are like makes no sense now why is Polly there well in Rocky 3 he gets a you know, uh, Rocky hires him, you know, to uh, be, a, uh, to, you know, to work with him. So he has, like, a job. Um, uh, uh, so that's basically why, you know, you don't see him too much prior, because up to that point, you know, it's Rocky and Apollo and Adrian isn't there, or it doesn't want this to happen, and then, of course, there's the funeral scene, which I didn't really talk about, but it's a bit more uh, to this, and that, you know, it's a bit different, you know, uh, Tony Burton gets to have, his character gets to do some more stuff, as well as Stallone's dialogue is a little like, more extended. And, um, and Stallone actually said that if he could go back in time, he would have never had Apollo die. He would have had him, like, be in a wheelchair. So, like, he got paralyzed uh, and can't walk anymore because of, you know, Ivan Drago. Which, of course, and, you know, he would have been, like, the new Mickey in that sense. And as a result, because of that, he... Uh, That would have actually changed the entire uh, uh, trajectory of the franchise. You know, Rocky V would have been different. Rocky Balboa would have been different. And maybe even the Creed films. Maybe those wouldn't even exist at all. You know, because... You know... If uh, Apollo Creed was still alive, maybe there would have been no real reason to uh, have those movies and have uh, him have impregnated another woman. Um, but yeah, uh, it's interesting how when Stone was talking and during the making of it and how it got to that point, what he would have changed for sure. Now, if you could go back and look at things from a certain point of view now, he would have just changed that whole aspect. That would have definitely changed the franchise. Um, who knows what would have happened. Um, but, you know, he... Uh, uh, <clears throat> But yeah, this film, you know, uh, and the director's cut also, you you kind of sympathize with um, Ivan Drago more. You know, he's being used by the Soviets in order to be like this big wrecking machine. And, you know, and you see that of glimpses here and there. And then, of course, during the whole, like, training montage and stuff, you know, he's just being used. And I think it's even more emphasized, yeah, it is definitely more emphasized in the director's cut, but I kind of got that sense originally in the theatrical cut, before this version ever existed. Um, but it's interesting to sh just highlight how Ivan Drago, while he is the antagonist, he isn't exactly the bad guy. You know, he's just being used. Um, because he just happened to be really big and very fit and so he's like the biggest guy they could get for boxing and so they used him 
and um, you know, uh, him, him saying to like Apollo and Rocky, if, "I must break you. You will lose." Um, the the few words he has, uh, I think, kind of adds to the character and makes him more interesting, in my opinion. Um, um, and there's also a I want to mention, you know, before, you know, Rocky decides to go to Russia, and fight Ivan Drago. Of course, he has that whole training montage. Um, but he, um, you know, he's driving and after conversation with uh, Adrian and now, like, he can't win. He'll lose. You know, he might even die. And now he's like, yeah, well, she doesn't, uh, you, she do, you won't, you don't lie to me. So, you know, he might die but, or might lose, but he's got to at least make an effort. And he's going to go drive, like, to think and he... I like how in the director's cut they keep that little montage, but also put it in black and white. Now, like, uh, which is kind of cool. And how they have uh, footage of Mickey in Rocky Three, where he fortunately dies, but that's because you know he's reflecting on so much that has happened already, and then you know, Apollo dying, and then Mickey dying, and um, I just like that. I like how we see Burgess Meredith in this film, despite him not filming a single brand new thing. I, I just like that. I like how he, uh, uh, how he still essentially gets to be in this through footage of the previous uh, entries. It's just, uh, I think that's really cool um, that he kept that as opposed to he could have just cut that entirely, but he didn't. Um, or re-edit it in the way where now Burgess Meredith, you know, as uh, Eki isn't there at all, either from uh, the first Rocky or the third Rocky or <clears throat> wherever. You know, I think that's really cool uh, that he's he's still in there, you know, regardless of the cut you watch. Um, and. Uh, yeah, of course, you know, then the training montage happens. He's still training uh, in his own way. He can't train the normal kind of way that he typically would. He has to find a brand new way, you know, of running and then uh, using whatever is there at the barn, at the place in Russia that they're at, and it's really cool and really unique and just to see how he you know uh, has to adapt to what he has all, all the while we see Ivan Drago training and just how different that is um, you know yeah uh, and then of course the whole fighting scene when they finally uh, meet face to face at the end of the movie where they're going to fight it's just uh, it's just really good you know regardless of the version you watch or whatever version you prefer of you know, Rocky 4 it's still very good it's still really uh, it's, it, it's, it's just very good and obviously no matter what Rocky wins um, and uh one thing that I do like is how at the end you kind of you get to see him and the director's cut go over to Ivan Drago and say something though you don't know what exactly he says and then he just walks off but you know in, in either version you know the crowd starts to cheer for Rocky and also how uh, you know Ivan the beginning is uh, hitting Rocky and just everything and how he just gets uh, beaten but then uh, Ivan Drago starts to uh, lay into Rocky and how you know that all is turning out uh, <clears throat> how he hurts 
Ivan and they just keep uh, throwing blows at each other. It's just very uh, interesting to seeing how he Ivan's like he's like a like he's like iron like a piece of iron and um, you know I, just to see him having to go from well this guy isn't anything to well well now he's something else you know what I thought he was he clearly isn't and now he has to try and uh, be better uh, you know and and also tells the guy who's like his manager or whatever because like the prime minister or whatever the, the leader of the Soviet Union I should say is there basically to watch this fight And uh, he goes to tell him like, he needs to win. He needs to just lay him out and all that. He just says, I'm going to... I've been trying to just pick him up by the neck. So he's going to win for himself, not for Russia. He doesn't care anymore about the winning for his country. He just wants to win for himself. You know, and he... Uh, You know, the two of them keep going, and then at the end, you know, Rocky is victorious. Though, in the theatrical cut, all the guys watching who are like the like heads of Russia or Soviet Union, they all, uh, in the theatrical cut, they all stand and clap after Rocky's speech about how if, you know, if he can change and uh, all the people there could change, then maybe the whole world can change. You know, they just get up and and they clap where in the director's cut that doesn't you know it doesn't really happen so I think that's a, a bit of a shame I think that would have been that was cool in a theatrical cut that you know everybody likes that message that you know they can change then the world can change and um you know hopefully for the better but I don't know I guess you know still don't thought that ending it where uh they all just leave, and he says something to Ivan Drago before leaving the ring was enough. And, uh, um, something I also want to mention, um, now that that's basically the end of the film, uh, the music has changed around, so Eye of the Tiger is now playing during the end credits as opposed to, like, the opening titles, which doesn't, which isn't really there now in the theater or in the director's cut it's more of like a oh boy what is it it's yeah, they, they, like the music has changed around so that that song the eye of a tiger no longer is there for the opening credits and set doesn't really exist now um, uh, the bill conti uh, theme uh, uh, he didn't at all, uh, yeah, he didn't at all, uh, uh, compose the music for this film. It was, uh, Vince DiCola. Um, but I know, in, uh, uh, in the director's cut, the Rocky theme by Bill Conti is actually heard more. You know, it's more prominent. I mean, it's still there. You can kind of hear it a little bit here, but the director's cut is more prominent, like near the end. So that's kind of cool that they put more of the actual Rocky theme from the original composer because he was busy doing other, you know, uh, another film, a couple other films. Uh, but yeah, he decided to do those as opposed to Rocky IV because scheduling and everything, but you know, he returned to do the next two installments. So the themes of Rocky are heard in Rocky IV, but more prominent in the director's cut. So yeah, and I know that was kind of all over the place. My discussion of Rocky IV with the overall kind of because I didn't want to just go overall uh, what the 
comparisons would be back and forth or at the end. But I thought it would be kind of cool to do it as I was just discussing the film itself and how these are certain, some of the uh, differences. And of course, you know, we can talk about and highlight some of the all the all the differences people have already done that but i haven't really talked about rocky four at all so decided to talk about that film and the director's cut um and that's really it um i like rocky four um and having seen the director's cut i don't know um if I would say I like the director's cut more, because I'm so used to Rocky IV. You know, saw it on TV, and then owned it on Blu-ray, so I've watched that cut so many times. It's like uh, Godfather Three. I like Coda. I like the Godfather Coda, the death of Michael Corleone, but I'm also so used to the Godfather Part Three. I'm so used to the theatrical cut of Rocky IV, but... Uh, I am curious if the more I watch the director's cut of Rocky IV, um, will I like it just as much as the theatrical cut, or will I like it even more? Um, so far, I can't really answer that. I still, I do like both, but I wouldn't say I like the, the, uh, the, the director's cut more than four. There are certain parts of the director's cut I really like. But then there's certain things from that theatrical cut that I kind of wish they kept in, but, you know, or at least still, Stallone kept in, but, you know, it was his cut, and he wanted this to be the case. And Though when I heard, like, 40 extra minutes of footage, I, I'm i sure, like, uh, many people thought, oh, I'm going to add 90 minutes to this, like, 90-some-minute movie, so it would be, like, over two hours, and you know, it wasn't, but it uh, goes from 91 minutes to 94 minutes, but oh well. The film itself overall is still good. The overall story is still there, just shaped a bit differently. Certain characters have more presence, some have less. Um... Just depends on what version you like the best. And then, you know, that'll be it. That'll be your deciding factor on whether the director's cut is good or not. Um, but I think it's fine. I think it's good for what it is. And uh, Stallone was able to get the kind of movie he wanted all, these year all those years that he wasn't able to do it and all the experience he's had since as a director. So, you know, that's good. But yeah, that's really all I have to say. Uh, do you enjoy Rocky IV? Have you seen the director's cut? And if so, do you prefer it over the theatrical cut? Uh, or do you prefer the theatrical cut over the director's cut? Or are you sort of like me, you like things in the theatrical cut, but you also like things in the director's cut? And I don't know, maybe you kind of wish there was some sort of in-between uh, cut where it has... Some elements that the theatrical cut had that the director's cut didn't, but then also uh, kept certain things in the director's cut that, you know, perhaps added uh, something to the story, to the characters, and everything. Just, yeah. And part of why I was all over the place with this one is because, you know, just, you know, I watched... Uh, both cuts back to back so it's kind of like uh just sort of overloading uh, i guess but pretty cool overall i think but that's me uh you can uh, leave your thoughts in the comments if you want or you don't have to ever write anything uh but yeah that's my overall thoughts on both cuts of rocky four i enjoy the film Things about the theatrical cut that I think are good. Things in the director's cut that are good. And, uh, yeah. That's really all. 
Um, and I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you all had a great weekend. I hope you all have a will have a great week. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.